Red One is everything you've come to expect from The Rock, Mr. P.P. Bottles himself. A, a film that never has a clever moment, a movie that feels like an exercise of supreme mediocrity, that, that you'll inevitably just drift off thinking about something else, anything else, really. It, it just feels like another movie that tries to showcase the brand, not the person, not the actor, but the brand that The Rock just feels like now. You know, the the safe, generic corporate product that The Rock has become over the years. (laughs) All right, my friends. So let's go ahead and get into this review for Red one. Now, I'm not going to go on a particularly long preamble with this particular film, all right? The, the latest action-adventure vehicle for Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Like many people, um, I've gotten pretty tired. Uh, no, that's not even the right word for it. I've gotten just pretty sick of these generic action movies starring The Rock, Right? Uh, They all feel the same in terms of tone, aesthetic, story, and action sequences. The Rock just always plays himself in everything, especially nowadays. You know, just generic, smoldering action man, as I like to call him now. His his, his character and and those around him have the character depth of, of a dried up puddle. He he you know, he battles some some faceless henchmen that work for a boring bad guy. He often ends up team up with a skinny, sometimes non-threatening white kid. He says a catchphrase or two, he arches his eyebrow and then we're at the end credits, right? The, the, the end. That, that that's what you get in a rock movie. See you at the next rock movie. He's just going to repeat the same exact things that I just described. Anyone expecting it would be any different with Red One, a film with cringy trailers that I and countless audiences and viewers have had the displeasure of, of watching for the last six months in theaters is, is, is any different <laughs> from the, the slop The Rock has been cooking for well over a decade is any different. I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to let you down easy. It's not. It's the same bullshit that we've seen from The Rock and his collaborators for years. Red One is a bad movie. Now, is it the worst film of the year? No. God, no. No, no. This year has given us some foul-smelling garbage, like Madam Web, Rebel Moon Part 2, Argyle, the the Joker, Filet Adu, Omelette Du Fromage, and Night Swim, the Haunted Pool movie. All those movies, along with some other ones, are certainly worse than Red One. Not exactly stiff competition, but, but still, you know, however, the, the movie is, is still bad because it, it feels so half-assed from, from the story to the characters to the aesthetic and the action scenes. Everything comes across as, as boring, bland, generic, and just... That's what it is. That's 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 the word to describe it. The feeling, the sound to describe the 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 work, the cinematic output of of the rock. That's what it is. A little bit of fart in there too. A little bit of a fart sound there, and it definitely smells a little bit. Red one is everything you've come to expect from the rock, Mister PP Bottles himself. A, A film that never has a clever moment. A movie that feels like an exercise of supreme mediocrity. That that you'll inevitably just drift off thinking about something else. Anything else, really. It, It just feels like another movie that tries to showcase the brand. Not the person, not the actor, but the brand that The Rock just feels like now. You know, the the safe generic corporate product that The Rock has become over the years. But I digress. (laughs) But I digress. You know, Red One, 
What is it even about? You know, people are probably asking about, does it, does it even matter? <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you guys the plot for those that might care, although I feel like those people are few and far between. The film takes place in a world where there is a careful balance between humanity and the multitude of fantasy creatures that exist in the world, right? This balance is maintained by an organization called MORA. It's an acronym, Chad. It's Mythological Oversight and Restoration Authority. Just rolls off the tongue so easily. It's a clandestine military organization that oversees and protects a secret peace treaty between mythological creatures and humanity. The Rock... He's the head commander of Santa Claus's ELF organization. ELF also is an acronym. Enforcement, logistics, and fortification rolls right off the tongue. And Santa's primary protector in, in the movie, right? But as Santa's primary uh, protector in the movie, he's become disenfranchised with the world and all of the naughty boys and girls that exist in and all those deplorable people, right? But Santa gets kidnapped, right? And uh, by some bad guys you don't give a shit about. Uh, and he has to team up with his, his uh, a generic white sidekick, played by Chris Evans, uh, who was partially responsible for Santa's kidnapping and generic hijinks in, 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 in Sue. I mean, Dwayne Johnson's character, I don't even know his name. I don't even know his name. I think, I think he has like a really generic action name. I think his name was Cal Cal Drifter or something like that. It's just like, well, of course, you know, just give me a cool sounding name or whatever. He's just playing The Rock. It doesn't matter. He is doing nothing different than what he's been doing for the last 15 years. He's just, he's just like, he's very serious. He's by the book. You know, you know, he occasionally gives out a catchphrase. He, you know, he's always a badass. You know, he's posing. He's smoldering, Chad. He's arching the eyebrow. He's doing everything you expect him to do. There's no depth to his character, like, at all. He's just a little sad because there's just, ah, there's no, he thinks there's no more good in the world. You know, he doesn't feel, um motivated to do his job anymore he's like i'm one year away from me time it's 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 like that kind of stuff that's exactly what he's doing his his course you know throughout the movie teams off with you know chris evans and chris evans is which is so sad about chris evans really because he is a great actor he's a good actor he's capable of giving fantastic performances i mean he did a wonderful job obviously for the past decade playing captain america steve rogers in those marvel movies he's kind of like the heart i would say of the of the first three phases of the MCU. Loved Moon or Soldier, Civil War, the Avengers movies. He's always a standout across all those films, no doubt about it. But even outside of his Marvel work, he's done some great stuff. Movies like Snowpiercer, a wonderful science fiction, dystopian science fiction film. He did he did a great job as the lead that movie. Uh, he, he's also obviously has shown his comedic side. It's kind of what he was known for th throughout a lot of his early career. And that occasionally pops up, you know, Every, every now and then. With stuff like, you know, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which he reprised his character in the, the animated kind of sequel series that he did. Uh, he, great in that movie. Uh, his kind of post-Marvel work where he thought like, oh, we're going to get a, like, a lot of really cool performances. Uh, Knives Out, he's one of the best things uh, about that particular film. But, you know, these last five or so years, he's, I, I, he's got to fire his agent because he has just starred in some generic bland bullshit i haven't seen all of it but i have seen some of it and i was like dude this stuff isn't worthy of, of of your talent which i know you have and so i have no idea what the hell's going on with him because he's just he just feels like he's coasting in this movie he's not bad right but he's just playing the kind of, kind of smarmy chris evans that we've that we've seen you know in the past except you know he's he's a hacker you know, he's got, like, you know, issues with his kid that he's trying to deal with at the same time. He has a team with The Rock, and they bicker. I mean, it's the same relationship that you've seen The Rock have with various other white sidekicks throughout his entire career. Everything from The Rundown, which is one of his better films, to something like Hobbs and Shaw. It's just, it's just, it's the same thing again. It's just a different model each time. A different model of, of, of a smarmy white actor, <laughs> right? And their relationship has as much depth again, as, as a puddle. J.K. Simmons, which again, J.K. Simmons being cast as Santa Claus, that's an inspired idea. That's great because obviously he has experience with that. He famously voiced uh, uh, Santa Claus, a version of Santa Claus in the animated film Claus from a number of years ago, which is a 
wonderful animated movie. Uh, a modern classic, in my opinion. They barely use him in this. He's completely wasted in this film. So you're thinking like, oh, you're going to see a uh, like a cool just action Santa Claus of J.K. Simmons. Like, don't worry, he ain't the focus, all right? He's just the fucking MacGuffin. <laughs> He's the MacGuffin. He was cast to play a MacGuffin in the movie. Honestly, the one character, the only person in the movie that I think was actually given a damn and really putting something forward was the guy that played the Krumpus. And in, the, in this movie, in the context of this world, the Krumpus is like one of the adopted brothers of Santa Claus and him and Santa just haven't gotten along in a number of years, right? He's played by Christopher Hivaju. I'm probably mispronouncing his name. He's probably best known for playing Tormund Giantsbane in Game of Thrones, the guy with like the red hair and the red beard and you know was always hanging out with Jon Snow it's that guy he's he he plays Krumpus in this he's the only thing in the film that is is somewhat interesting like he seems to be having fun as the character in the makeup and all that what they're doing with him Outside of that, nothing. You don't give a shit about any of the other characters in the movie. Lucy Lou's in the movie. Who gives a shit? It's Lucy Lou. She can barely act to begin with. Um, the, the action and the CGI, it, the action is just poorly choreographed and as generic as you would expect. The CGI, you can see from the trailers, it doesn't get any better. <laughs> it doesn't get any better at all. I think what they show is probably the best uh, uh, of the movie. The rest of it just looks like crap. The writing is bland most of the time. Uh, and when it's not bland, then it's just overly sentimental. It's overly saccharine. Like they have a whole, you know, uh, a subplot in regards to, you know, Chris Evans and his kid is like, I just don't give a shit about this. <laughs> it, 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 it's gonna, it, it wraps itself up in the exact way you expect it to. It just, it just feels like a movie made by committee, right? Made to be perfectly inoffensive safe and for everyone, devoid of personality or uniqueness, the perfect blend of corporate product that The Rock himself has become. It is a perfect vehicle for him because it represents what he is. It is the definition of The Rock as an actor, a creator, an entrepreneur, and a businessman, forgettable and Blah. That's that's what I would describe him and this movie. Forgettable and blah. There's just there's just so many other alternative Christmas movies that you guys can check out right now that I would recommend that are that have come out even recently or, or years ago. Like instead of going to see Red One, no one's gonna see this movie. There's hardly anyone in my goddamn audience when I went to go see the film. The movie's gonna bomb. It's a critical failure. It's gonna be a commercial failure. Chat. It's gonna be forgotten. It's gonna be you know resting in a fucking Walmart uh, a Blu-ray bin where all those things are uh, between the the prices of a dollar and five bucks. That's where it's gonna remain for the remainder of its of, of its existence before. Or it's eventually forgotten from the pop culture vi uh, uh, um, zeitgeist. Um, but I encourage people to check out some other alternative Christmas movies. Classics, obviously, like, you know, The Gremlins. Everyone loves Gremlins, Chad. Just a wonderful uh, horror fantasy uh, Christmas movie, right? Uh, uh, Krumpus, funny enough. Krumpus from uh, almost a decade ago now, directed by Michael Doherty, a another great Christmas horror film. Uh, Black Christmas, right? Directed by Bob Clark, who also directed A Christmas Story, one of the uh, most influential slashers of the 1970s. Uh, right next to head and shoulders next to stuff like um, um, John Carpenter's Halloween or Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, another great, you know, wonderful movie. Or, or a film that I kept thinking about while watching this film. And that movie was Violent Night, which came out like a couple of years ago, chat, which was, which was that David Harbour Santa Claus movie. It was pretty much Die Hard, except what if the John McClane character was Santa Claus? And you know what I love about that movie? It didn't have this humongous budget. It didn't have an overabundance of, of, of CGI. It was mean, lean, and gritty. And you had David Harbour, who did such a wonderful job playing a disenfranchised Santa Claus, right? And, and just being miserable. He's an alcoholic. He's a, he's a drunk, right? But he has to pull himself up. He has to survive this horrific scenario. He's got to deal with these, these robbers, these terrorists. Got to save a family. He's got to kill some people. And he does it very well and very effectively. And you like his character, right? Because he's, he's actually acting in the movie, 
right? He's not just playing himself like what The Rock does throughout this film. I was just, God, that movie is infinitely better. So if, if you want to see a badass Santa Claus movie, right, don't watch this. Watch something like Violent Night. Watch something like Klaus and one, another wonderful uh, modern uh, 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 classic uh, Santa Claus film. Hell, watch Tim Allen's The Santa Claus. That movie's a body horror film. Check that movie out, chat. Just, 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 just watch those movies in, instead. Don't watch Rogue. Don't. I, I already forgot the name of the movie. Was it Red One? Red One. I was gonna call it Rogue One. Red One. <laughs> Don't watch Red One. I mean, I, I'm not gonna tell you what to watch, what not to watch. Make up your own mind. But I, I feel like your your time is better spent elsewhere. Your money is better spent on things that I think are actually good, and you'll have a fulfilling experience with. Right. And Red One, in my honest opinion, is not those things. But what about you guys? What did did anyone see this movie? Did you, did you even care? Uh, did you like the film, right? Did you, were you mixed on it? Did you think it was awful like, like I did? Let me know. What about you, Chad? What'd you think of, uh, Red One? <laughs> I keep forgetting, I keep forgetting the name. Oh, my Lord. Five minutes later. Oh, Game of Thrones, actors need to fight their agents too, I think. Oh, I'm trying to think some of them. Um, I mean, the Christopher, I can't, I can't say his name. He's got, he's got like a, a Bork name. I can't, I can't, but he's good. He, I, he's the best thing in the film. Christopher Hibshu, he is also in the Fate of Fears, Cocaine Bears, x Nurse Trilogy Gods. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, he's the voice, isn't he a voice of Thor in that? Uh, the Rock is always the same in every movie, so I'm not surprised the movie isn't good. It says too tall. Uh, Space Cowboy says, yeah, watching this, I was thinking of Arthur Christmas and Spirited. Both far better monikers, but I have not seen Spirited. Uh, Casey, Hell Gremlins, A Bad Santa are two of my favorite Christmas movies. Violent Night was so awesome. Watch those. Yeah, Violent Night's so good. I wasn't even a big fan of Violent Night. Oh, that's such a shame. But at least that had a strong cook. Yeah, I, I, I love Violent Night. I think Violent Night's a fucking blast. Um, well, hopefully Glider 2 and Wicked will be better for you next week. We'll see. We'll see. We'll find out. I'll let you guys know. Uh, Bishop Sycamore. Oh, hi, Chris and Jack. Good to have you, Bishop. Welcome. Red One sounds exactly how I figured it would be. Yeah, I mean, the tra I mean, I will say this. The trailers were accurate. <laughs> they didn't, they weren't selling you something different. They are selling exactly what they're showing. <laughs> um, here we go. Yeah, this was both overblown generic as hell at the same time, although I didn't find it as bad as I expected because I like Chris Evans, Jake, and Simmons, even with the little screen time, and there were some ideas that Better Ryan could have helped save this by the last three. I was just trying to be over, and I was never angry. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I'm just, I'm not even angry at it. It's just, it's just like, it's just what I come to expect. It's just, I was bored by it. I was just bored by it, and it's just like, this is... This, this is making me feel absolutely nothing, which I think is kind of the worst thing you can be, in a way. Like, I do think there are, like, worse movies that have come out this year, 100%. Like, those movies actually made me go, like, what the fuck are you even doing? It's like, this is just bad. It's so made me frustrated. Here, it's just like, well, this is what I expected it to be because that's what they were selling me the entire time. And so I wasn't disappointed because literally my expectations were subterranean. It's like, yeah, this is what I expect from The Rock now. I expect him to just make this safe, generic corporate crap. You know, because that's kind of what his brand is right now. This safe, generic corporate crap. Um, Red one more like no one. Uh, save my money for the real shit next week. We'll see. Uh, Dil Murray. Dil Murray. Good to have you here. Good to have you here, Dil Murray. Dwayne Johnson's The Rock in a Christmas movie? I can't wait to watch this. On the toilet. Yes, that's that's the way to watch it. Uh, Spirit was actually really good. I've not, I've not, I just haven't seen it. Regardless of how next week's movie turns out, at least one looks like an actual attempt to make a movie. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah, this isn't making it in my bottom 10. Yeah, it's just, I just, I mean, I'll mention it as, like, one of, like, an honorable mention for my worst movies, but, yeah, there, there's worse things. There, there absolutely is. But, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah, Karen Shipka plays a new agent, too. The ones where she leads are bad, and when she's in a good movie, Long Legs, Twister, she's only in for, like, uh, five minutes. Yeah, 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 she plays, um, uh, she plays a character in this film. Save generic corporate crap, the Herminator. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, weird old bottle peen egotist. Yeah, it's kind of what he is. Yeah, yeah. This isn't this isn't helping him. Whatever. Big black guy reviews. By the way, good to have you here. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Sorry, I, I read over your your comment without acknowledging you. That's good. Save generic corporate crap, the Herminator. Yeah, that's 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 exactly what it is, man. Yeah. It just it's it's bad. It's bland. I'm not even mad at it. This is what I've, I just, again, this is, this is just what I've come to expect from Dwayne The Rock Johnson. This is like, it's gonna, it's no different than 
several other projects that he's made over the last several years. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Movie fans hate him. Wrestling fans hate him. <laughs> and that's what, yeah, that's what's happened. You know, like he's just, he's always kind of present himself in this specific way. And, you know, you, you live long enough to see yourself, either die here or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. So, yep. What are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? That's so funny. I didn't even bother to look up who directed the movie. <laughs> I did. Oh, this is oh, this is by Jake Kasdan. I didn't even bother to look it up. I was like, who gives a shit who directed it? It doesn't even matter. It doesn't feel like it's, it, again, it doesn't even feel like it's directed by someone with like a particular vision or anything. It just feels like it was just made by a corporation. Just like they had all the business, all the suits in there saying like, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. You can't offend anyone. It's like a movie. We got to make this movie for everyone. It's got to be for everybody. But in their effort to make it for everybody, they make it for nobody, make it for no one. It's, it's, uh, it's directed by um, Jacob uh, Kasdan. Who, of course, is the is the son of uh, of uh, writer Lawrence Kasdan. Jesus, <laughs> and he's collaborated with The Rock on several of the movies. Obviously, the more recent um, Jumanji films. So that's their relationship here. But yeah, I didn't even bother to look up. I was like, hey, it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. And you know, the screenplay is written by Chris Morgan because I, I I like to reference the uh, Wikipedia when I'm doing my reviews. So I want to see what Chris Morgan has done. He's he's apparently been a writer. And uh, this is his filmography chat. He has written a film called Cellular, which, funny enough, has Chris Evans. Uh, the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift wanted uh, Fast and Furious the fourth one. So this is the guy that's done like a lot of the Fast movies. Fast Five, Fast and Furious Six, 47 Ronin, Furious Seven, um, The Fate of the Furious, uh, producer on The Mummy, producer on Bird Box, he hops and shots. So that, that's the connection. Writer of Shazam, Theory of the Gods. Uh, and then, yeah, I read one. There you go. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. You know those scenes in The Boys where they have meetings with the sycophantic director's writers? This feels like something they would... Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Ex perfect. Perfect. They have to... They, they, that, that, that is... That had to be the, the way in which this movie was conceived. Oh, so it's a modern Dwayne Johnson movie, basically, let's sell some toys, probably. Yeah, sell some toys. Sell. No, it's not even sell some toys. It's just sell me, sell me. Like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he is the, he's the product. He's the brand, right? It's to, it's to, it's to c c continue pushing him out there in the pop culture zeitgeist, right? Consume me. That's what I think the movie is trying to sell, just... just you know, it's, just, it's, does, it's, it's not a movie. <laughs> oh, my lord. Uh, sounds like this movie needed some more shoot this motherfucker energy from Wanted. I'm not even a big Wanted fan, to be per to be perfectly honest. Uh, it just, I, it needed a lot of things. You know, like They needed to go go back to the screenwriting phase of this entire movie to make it something else. Uh, are they going to get Chris Evans for the next Fast movie and him the rock? I, I, yeah, I wonder. I wonder. We'll see. I've never seen Cellular, so I don't know. I'm not sure. He is the toy, not to be confused with the toy starring Richard Pryor. Yeah, yeah, no, he, no, yeah, The Rock is the product. He's the product that the movie is trying to sell. So, yeah, chat, not very good, not a good movie at all. But again, I think a lot of us expect it not to be good because those trailers, which we've had to watch every time we've gone to the theater for the last six months, have just looked so bad. You know, like you, you, you can tell, uh, like when a trailer is really bad. It's not just like how you feel about it, but you can tell just like everyone else around you, there's just that feeling of, ugh, right? That you're all sharing that, almost like as one organism. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this movie is, uh, its fate was already written six months ago when they showed the first trailer. I was like, yeah. Scale 1 to 10, how was read 1? I don't really do numbered reviews. I don't do, a, I don't have a numerical scale. I don't, I don't have like a rating system. Um, you know, I mean, you know, if you, if you want to use a numerical system, use a rating scale, be my guess. I, my, my issue with those things is that I think so many, and I understand why they're used. I totally understand it. Um, cause people like want to know, like, you know, what you would assign to it. Uh, I don't like to assign a specific number or a phrase or a word to an entire movie because I feel like that does a disservice to like everything that I just talked about. I want people to take in like everything that I've said about the film itself, you know, from the the, the structure, the writing, the, the the or whatever the hell I'm I'm talking about within the movie. 
Uh, I just like to avoid that because then people, they, I, I think they hyper fixate and they hyper focus on just the rating itself. And then, you know, it could be like, Years later, they'll be like, well, you, you, you gave this uh, movie this rating, but then you gave this movie the same exact rating. How are these two? Is like, yeah, I just don't like that. So that's why I just prefer people to take in my full review and be like, oh, okay, and really understand as to why I dislike it. I, I, don't, like to, I don't like to dilute it into a number. I don't dil I like to dilute it into a phrase. But some people do. Some people like, uh, like do that. It's just I just don't personally. Um, let's see here. Bad boy, Seller's pretty much like Die Hard, Kim Bastard's kidnapped, she's able to hotwire a broken phone, calls Chris Evans on his cell phone, he has to save her from Jason Statham. Yeah, one of those. Oh, well, that's kind of an interesting promise. Um, negative 10 trillion, Viper Fox, losing ass, I'll give it, you know what, I'll give it that. Here's my rating, ass out of 10, yes. <laughs> ass out of 10. Oh, my lord. I can pretty much guess the number based on your review anyway, yeah, yeah. Not the worst film this year, not the worst film. Again, that's not a compliment. There are worse movies. I don't know. I missed the review. Oh, yeah. It's a bad movie, Viper. But good to have you here, Viper Fox. By the way, chat, check out Viper Fox's channel. Give her some support on our various platforms. She's a wonderful streamer, a wonderful artist, artist, and a wonderful person. No doubt about that. And also, Big Black Guy Reviews, man. It's been a hot minute. Welcome back. Hope you're doing very well. Check out Go Ahead and Promote Yourself, too. I know you do reviews. I know you do content, too. So go ahead. Post some links in the chat. People can check out your content right now. At your leisure, of course. No pressure, no pressure if you don't want to. But go ahead. People can find you. Good stuff, good stuff. But yeah, she has my Reaver Red one. You know, I got really nothing else to add to it. <laughs> it is, it is what it is.